Okay, so uh, we looked at the, the two traps and basically the way you have to look at them is that you have to see what are the good moves and why they were played. Like uh, when black plays rook c8, uh, we, we, were track, we were moving the bishop backward to b3 and then the game starts. That is the theory. Now you have to know the theory, then only you can play the opening well into that. So we have looked at two of them. So you now have a understanding uh, about how to play in the dragon. And uh, this is what we have discussed. Where was it? Mm, yeah, rook c8, and then you play bishop b3, knight e4, knight e5, and then h4, h5. Okay, uh, h4, there is there are two ways of playing. Black can even play knight c4 first and exchange this bishop for the knight, and then don't play h5 itself. So again, there are two ways of playing here. It's not that there's only one way, way of playing you want to play h5. Uh, players also play knight c4, bishop c4, rook c4, and then the game proceeds from there. Okay, so that is one. Two traps I wanted to talk about the dragon. Let me now go to the Sicilian dragon and show you a very, uh, Sicilian in the accelerated dragon. I'll show you the accelerated dragon where there's a very, very fascinating and important trap. In fact, this was... Um, sprung by Bobby Fischer against Reshevsky, okay, in 1958. And this is a very important trap to know and very, uh, can it's a, such a beautiful trap, which uh, I think Bobby Fischer was just 14 years when he sprung it against his uh, opponent. And 14 years, he was the US champion. Okay, e4, c5, knight f3. We have looked at the dragon where you start with d6. Now, this accelerated dragon, the idea is you want to save a tempo. You want to black plays d6 and then d5, right? It, in two moves. Like if you had castled, he would have played d5 in two moves. But here in the accelerated dragon, black plays d5 in one go at some point of time. Okay. So at the nature of the game changes completely. It's not same as the dragon. There is a different... Uh, Think different type of setup which happens. So here, black typically starts with knight c6. He can also play g6 on the second move. That is the hyper accelerated dragon, but it has it has similarity with this one. Uh, so knight c6, white plays d4. Again, open Sicilian, you want to uh, open the center uh, and uh, try to develop the pieces quickly. Okay, so that is, uh, that is why it's called the open Sicilian. White takes this. And black take and uh, black takes this and white cap recaptures with the knight. Now, again, there is not one way of playing that you can play knight f6 also, but we are looking at the dragon at the accelerated dragon where the better move is to play g6 and keep the bishop on this diagonal. Okay, the bishop on g7 as quickly as possible. Now, here there are two possible possibilities for white. As I told you in opening, there is not like a puzzle that there's only one possibility. There are several branches, sometimes two branches, sometimes three branches, sometimes there are four setups. Now here you can look, white can play c4, which is called the Maroxi bind, and the other is knight c3. Right now, let's confine to knight c3, then we'll come back and look at c4, because there's a very interesting trap in c4 also. So uh, knight c3, and black plays bishop g7, attacking this knight, and white protects this. Okay, and now black plays knight f6. This is sixth move, knight f6, and now white is playing bishop c4 because black is getting ready to play d5. You want to prevent playing of uh, playing this d5 as much as possible. That is why you want to play bishop c4. And black. Again, there are two possibilities. Black can castle or play queen a5. In the game against Fisher, Fisher was white, black castle. Reshevsky was again, I think, four times he was champion. Uh, and he, uh, but he was not as strong as Bobby. Bobby was a phenomenal uh, player. So he, black castled and white played knight, uh, white played bishop b3, just tucking the bishop backward because the bishop is loose there. And uh, he said, okay, he thought, let me uh, tuck it backward. It is protected by the pawn. Now, the positional consideration here is the knight, black wants to exchange the knight for the bishop. Because this bishop, not even in Ray Lopez, in, uh, in e4, e5 openings also, 
in sicilian also a lot of times the bishop is on this diagonal a2 a2 uh, g8 diagonal then it is a very powerful bishop okay so you want to typically exchange for the knight on with, exchange this bishop for the knight on c6 but here it is a mistake you cannot do that that is what even though general by general considerations uh, the strategy demands that but right now it is not possible and Rashevsky, he went for this knight a5 on the ninth move. And Bobby came with a brilliant idea. And something, I mean, uh, seeing this move on the board, I am sure that Rashevsky would have fallen off his chair. I mean, such a beautiful idea he came up. And it is hard to believe that from this position, black is getting into a huge disadvantage. Okay, and this looks very natural, okay? Eight, Till this point, he has played okay. One mistake, and you will see that his uh, his whole structure collapses in few moves. First, white plays e5, and this is another thing that see uh, the pieces are slightly uh, not in a appropriate place. You will see how he exploits this. When you play e5, black's knight is now in a bad position. Where can he go? He cannot play knight h5 because g4 will happen and the knight will get trapped. So he is forced to play knight to e8. Okay, there is another possibility. In fact, that is the best which white black had at his point. And that was to take the bishop. This was the best, I'll tell you, but that is also that also has a slight disadvantage. He should have taken this bishop. We'll take this knight. We'll take this rook. Okay, take this bishop now. And here, rather than say, taking the pawn, you take this with a check. He takes here and you take this pawn. This is the best black can arrive at that position. Now, if you count the material, black has a white has a bishop and knight, and black has two pawns. Bishop and knight for a rook and two pawns. So it would on the material count it is equal, but this position is strategically lost. Why it is strategically lost? First of all, rook and two pawns, they are equal in the end game. Right now, it's an opening phase and you have a lot of weakness on the dark squares. If you have done this type of setup, f7, g6, and h7, and you do not have a dark squared bishop and your opponent has a dark squared bishop, then it is really bad news because you cannot fight on the dark squares. And he has a knight also, also in this. So the rook, Rook's power will be manifested quite later in the game, but before that, white will launch a very massive attack. So this is what he should have gone, okay? This is, you have to live with this evil. You, it's not that you can make the position better than what it is actually, but this is what he should have gone with. He should have captured the, he would have got the bishop and uh, rook and uh, given these pieces, but this is what black should have achieved, okay? But he didn't for, go for this. He didn't realize uh, Bobby's idea, otherwise he would have definitely gone with this, because in the other line, he is blown off the board. e5 and he played knight e8. Now, knight e8 is such a disgusting move to play on the board, okay? He also would have understood because he was four or five times champion, but he thought, okay, next move, I will play d6, I'll break this and come out. But in chess, a lot of times it happens that there is so much disharmony that the opponent, if he's able to calculate and capitalize on that very movement, then you don't get the second chance. And that is what happened in the game. Okay, This is from the real game in 1958. Now, what Bobby did was a brilliant idea. He played bishop f7, a bolt from the blue. <coughs> now, after bishop f7, what would white do? What would black do? Black, he cannot play king h8. Because if he plays king h8, knight d6 traps the queen. Okay, you can't play king h8. You, can't, you think that, okay, I'll go there, but it doesn't make sense. This, there's a pin here, and knight e6 actually wins the queen because the c7 square and the b6 squares are also taken away by white pieces. The bishop on e3, it takes away the b6 square. And uh, the c7 square is taken away by the knight. Okay, so you can't move this, your queen is trapped. Okay. So what can I do if I can't uh, move the king to h8? I can capture with the rook or I can capture with the king. If you capture with the rook, 
still I will play knight e6 and trap the queen. The queen is trapped here, right? Because the, you see the pin, this is the point. The point is that there are few things working here in white's favor. So this, this pin along the d file actually will lead to the loss of the queen. You can't do here anything. So then the other choice is to play king takes. Now black, white played a brilliant move, knight e6. And I'm sure that Reshev, when he saw this move, Reshevsky would have fallen off his chair, okay? I mean, this is such a brilliant move that after that, you can't do anything. In fact, Reshevsky, he gave the queen for two minor pieces and he uh, played this game. Uh, he continued playing this game. He, I think he took the knight, he gave the queen and he played knight c6 and uh, played for a few more moves and then resigned. The point here is you cannot take with the king, you get mated. If you take with the king, the queen springs into action, queen d5. Only move is king f5. And it is obvious to calculate, we can, I will show it on the board, that if the king is flushed out in the open with so many pieces on the board, you will be hunted down. That is why Reshevsky didn't go for this line here. He saw that it is mate coming, okay, g4. Giving one more piece, you want to open the g file. Just kill. Rather than g4, even queen e4 would have been mate, right? Uh, no, no, yeah, yeah. See, this right now, this mate will happen in several ways. I mean, black is not able to uh, hold this position in any way, but basically, you want to open as many pieces into the action and uh, bring it into with gain yeah. of time. That is the idea. Now, rook g1, this didn't happen, okay? He took the he gave the queen for two pieces, otherwise, he would have got mated. He saw that he will lose, that's why he, he didn't go for this line. But this is what would have happened. Now, you can't play. Uh, queen king to h3 because queen g2 will happen and you'll get mated anyway this it doesn't make sense to go here because okay you will come here and when you go here i will come uh, this way and deliver the mate right so at this point uh after this after this check the best you can do is you can come here or uh, king h5 or king h4 is what you can play but in both the cases king h4 also it's not going to help you because I have several, there are several ways of delivering the mate. The fastest is queen d1 and coming to uh, g4 and you cannot hold on for a long time. Okay, you can't play h5 because uh, rook will, I mean, the bishop will come a check there and then you'll get mated. So here, this is the line. So that uh, you can play d5. You can play d5. Okay. Uh, no, but you... No, one might say that I do and pass, huh? Okay, let's calculate this. This is actually winning because after bishop g5, queen king will come to h3. I'm just thinking, how do you do that? Uh, queen d3 is possible. Yeah, see, it, you'll get mated in several lines. You, there, there would be uh, several ways of winning here. Come here. Now queen f3. Queen f3 is not possible. The rook is open on the f5. So oh, that yes. Sir. Queen d3. And uh, at this point, you will have to take this. I don't see any other option. And then the queen g3 will be made. Okay, but the point is that at this point, when the king is flushed out in the open, uh, so much in, I mean, king lands on f5, then definitely white's pieces will be able to spring that, uh, create a mating net and deliver a checkmate. So the idea of e5, bishop f7, and knight e6, all these three moves were so strong that black is forced to give up the queen. Otherwise, he is getting mated by force. And this is what this is such a beautiful game by uh, Bobby that uh, I mean, at this point, it is lost after 11 moves. The moment he will play e5, king, uh, I mean, after e5, when he plays knight e8, then bishop f7, king f7, and this knight e6 is such a, a devastating move that he had to take the knight with the pawn. Because he realized that this is a mate, okay? With so many pieces you cannot hold for three, four moves, okay? That is like totally lost. So this is what is a very, very interesting thing. And uh, I mean, that's what the opening theory says that at this point, the ninth move, knight a5, uh, I mean, eighth move, knight a5 is a fundamental mistake. You can't go ahead and chase this bishop. So this you can't. This is not possible. You have to bring the queen out, or you have to play d6 and start 
developing the pieces because the queen is quite uh, i mean it looks like okay the everything is harmonious but it is not you have to play d6 and open that or you can play i mean you can play queen a5 also because otherwise there's a catastrophe which is about to uh, come and this has happened in some other tournaments also i was reading a, reading a book catastrophe in the opening and this position after e5 it happened in again a lithuanian championship i think 1959 or something uh, because he the other player didn't go with knight e8 like reshevsky but he went with knight uh, b3 he realized that okay this is not uh, i mean again the same idea is being implemented against me so now let me take this uh, thing this is this is better of the two evils there you have blown off the board what happened with reshevsky is like it is total uh, annihilation of your forces okay so this is a very uh, interesting one now i want to show you another one in the accelerated dragon see this uh, sicilian opening is full of uh, tactics and lot of traps and calculation which you have to do uh, in the discovery discovered attacks and all which is always coming that is why it is interesting opening to play for aggressive players <coughs> okay so i'll show you another system after bishop c4 <coughs> he can also play queen e now the idea is that you are pinning this knight now this is a trap from black side so as i said that there are two systems you can play castle or you can play queen a5 both are acceptable systems of playing in the open a queen a5 is like putting pressure on the central pawn e4 and he's uh, black is trying to win the central pawn so here the correct move is just to castle uh, because if you play the natural looking move queen d2 and think that okay that is the way i will protect the pawn but that is not good okay that falls into a tactical trap so before uh, talking about that this is again the opening theory you should understand that okay if you play queen a5 white is forced to castle here on the king side and go for a more positional uh, type of approach both the sides will castle on the king side and the game continues so in the accelerated dragon black can force white to castle on the same side of the board and that is when avoid this uh, direct confrontation otherwise in the in the normal dragon as we have seen white's best chance is to go for the yugoslav setup bishop e3 f3 queen d2 bishop c4 castles and then h4 h5 at some point of time and that is actually very dangerous and white scores heavily in that score in fact bobby fisher in his book he has mentioned that in dragon white wins 9 out of 10 games okay so now later on people have uh, tried to equalize from black and it's still very very uh, it's not very easy to do that but in the accelerated dragon at least you force white to castle on the king side because he's not getting one extra move okay one move is making a difference now we'll look at this move queen d2 so i know the trap like okay the now try me tell me what After queen d two, you are black. What would the knight e four? Knight e four. Knight e four. Okay. Uh, and he plays knight c six. Then what will you do? Ah, uh, yeah. One minute. What What does he do? Knight c six. Knight captures knight. Okay. Knight captures knight. Yeah. Then. Oh no. Yeah, then I will play knight cross b four. Oh no! Wait, the queens got opened, right? Yeah. No, no. You play yeah, knight. Yeah. So I trade the queens. I trade the queens. Okay. So I, you want to play knight e four? I play yes. knight here. Then what will you do? Oh, I capture that one. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. Hmm. 
So one thing before you start calculating, one thing you have to do when these type of complex positions are there, it is very important to calculate all the branches. Okay, yeah. if you miss one of the branches, then what can happen is you can wrongly infer that your move is the best and it is actually a catastrophe because these sharp positions, one make one mistake and the position collapses. You don't get the second chance, okay? So that is why it is imperative that you look at the position very, very carefully. Okay, so yeah, tell me, Vihan. Yeah, so I had calculated for knight cross e4. Knight cross uh, e4 is uh, you are winning a pawn, right? Yes. Yeah, that is obvious. What you are telling is right. Knight here, and if I capture this knight, then you can trade I'm the king. Yeah, I'm winning a pawn, and then it's 2v1. Yeah, you are you are winning a pawn. Okay, you can uh, take it with this bishop, and uh, you are a black is a pawn up. Yes. Pawn up with no compensation because it's not that white has an initiative for a pawn. Okay, no initiative. So this is a bad position. So definitely, this one if you capture if you capture the pawn here and he white plays knight e4, then you uh, you win a pawn. But what is more yeah. important? So so here there is a counterway, uh, so that a knight c6. So what you do is you play knight cross d4. First eliminate that. First move you want to play knight d4. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. I will play. Uh, I am forced to play bishop d4. Yeah. And or am I forced now... to play bishop d4? One minute. I am not because your bishop is not castled. Uh, but okay, if I play this. Uh, okay, I will play bishop d4. Yeah, then I'll play knight. Mm. Yeah, knight e4. Okay, knight e4, knight e4. And uh, you trade the queens. No, no, that is... Uh, that is, you have won a pawn, right? That is what you are arguing. Yeah. But it is... E Cool, right uh, okay you will win a pawn like that okay so you want to play knight e4 okay if you play knight e4 i play bishop g7 oh, no bishop g7 is like this okay i play knight takes and uh, okay so that is what you are doing so if i take with the queen th that option is there because you are not castled here uh, that option is also there because the bishop is unprotected. You can't play knight g4 or knight e4. I'll take your uh, bishop on g7. That option okay. is also there. Right? Yes. Even though I'm walking in the line of uh, the bishop, okay, even though the bishop is facing the queen, but if I can calculate and make it work for one move, then in the next move, I understand that my queen is fa is in, uh, is facing a bishop. There will be a discovered attack, and I will uh, try to get out of it. But here you can't play uh, this move, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so here, okay. Let's see this. Knight e4 is if I play knight e4, that is the correct move. Obviously, you can't play knight e4. Okay. If you play knight e4, uh, then black is a pawn up. But white plays knight c6. This is the main line. Okay, I mean main line in the sense that queen d2 is not the correct move from white. He should castle. But here the best chance for white is to play knight c6. Now black should not take the queen. Okay, if you take the queen, you are actually losing. You take the queen, he takes the queen, and you are actually in a disadvantage. Okay, you, if you take the queen, I take this queen, and my bishop is protected by. Yeah, my bishop is protected by uh, by the knight on a5. So actually, white is emerging a piece up. If you see that, okay, if you take this one, and I take here, white is a piece yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. So that is not the correct uh, continuation. So what should uh, white do? White black black do black should play queen c3. A queen sack. Looks very counterintuitive, but I'll explain this. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a queen. Yeah, this queen c3 is an important move. You have to take this knight with the queen. Why? Because what will happen now? Now you take you have, you you can take the queen with the queen is meaningless. If you take the queen with the queen, then I take uh, your queen with the knight or bishop, and then you are. I mean, if you take with this, 
I can uh, play this. Uh, I will have to. I'm just thinking to take with the knight or with the bishop. So yeah, you should take with the knight. He cannot capture back. Uh, then then yeah, yeah, I'll take with the knight, and uh, then what will happen is like uh, you will move this knight, or you will capture. You can't capture because I have bishop c3. You will move this backward uh, somewhere, or maybe here, and I will also move it uh, backward. And what is happening is that I have emerged. I I am a pawn up, right? Black is yeah. a pawn up in this uh, way. You count the material. There are three minors. Both the sides have three minors. So taking with the queen is in instead the better choice for white is to take with the pawn, right? It, because you don't. You just want to take this queen. But still, I'll make the same move. I'll take your queen. This is worse. No, not worse, but. I mean, it is in any case white is losing a pawn because if you run away with, I'm attacking the bishop actually in a way, right? I'm attacking your bishop. So if you take this, I take this. Black is not too much ahead in material, but one pawn ahead. But then can't you just play bishop c3 at that moment? Yes. When you take with the pawn. Uh, c3. The bishop takes is like. Uh, you, if you play bishop takes, I think it is slightly inferior. You should take the queen. Because if you take with the bishop, I take here, you take here, and then I will move this. You will be a piece down. Oh, how is yeah. that? There are three minors uh -huh. for white. There are two minors for black. See, what has happened is you have already given, I mean, if you... Yeah, you so getting, you should not delay. Yeah, you're getting the queen for a knight here. But... Uh, I mean, you can take this immediately, right? The knight is anyway in trouble. Why are you playing bishop c3 again? Yeah. So you should take this. Now you both the sides have three minors. If he runs away with this knight, you run away with your knight. Okay. That is the point. Okay. So here in this case, what what you should try to understand is that discovery discovered attacks are very very powerful and also if they are intermediate moves like knight c6 is an intermediate move but in the calculation it is very imperative to calculate the intermediate moves a lot of times we miss the intermediate moves because we are missing one branch of the calculation it is not that white is forced to capture here on e4 no but even then we see that it is not working out for white that is another point. What I'm trying to say is in our calculation, we should try to, uh, especially in classical chess, you have the time to calculate and think about the position. In rapid, sometimes you do not have that much time that, okay, you are able to calculate several branches. Because see, these are called critical positions in the game. When there is a lot of conflict happening and there are several captures, then you have to calculate everything precisely. Because if you miss the calculation here, then it will have a huge implication on the game. It can be catastrophic also, right? It is not that you get you can recover from such positions. That is why in these positions, you have to sharply calculate and see that, okay, 94, if he takes this, then it is obvious. That is what uh, Vihan was able to see that, okay, I'll exchange the queens and no matter what you capture with, I'll get back, uh, I mean, you can capture with this or whatever you want to capture. And I'm getting back uh, this piece and this is fine. And the important point to see is that if he takes this, then you can't take the queen immediately. Taking the queen immediately is incorrect. So that is what, how do you come to the correct, cal correct, uh, correct move, correct sequence of moves? You have to calculate all the possible branches. After knight c6, you have to see, okay, what, what will happen if queen c6? Queen c3, what will happen in case of knight d2? What will happen in case of bishop uh, c3? All the possible captures you have to calculate. Some of them intuitively you can dismiss. Okay, this is not worth my time. I don't want to see that. That is not, not working in any case. But here, only after calculating only, you can determine that queen c3 is the best move. Not any other move on the board. This is the only move. This is like a puzzle thing. This is not like the opening system which we are talking that Okay, in accelerated dragon, you can play queen a5 or you can castle there. You no, know, here it is precisely queen c3. That is the best move. And now, regardless of what he captures, we have seen that pawn capture makes sense. And then I capture this queen. And now, always see, always you have to keep count of the material also. Okay, sometimes it is difficult to keep track of it. And we start forgetting, okay, what is the material count and stuff like that. 
and see this knight capture is also hitting the bishop so you eliminate this and uh, i take this and black is a pawn so from this tactical thing this is again a, a very interesting uh, it's a temporary queen sack it's not a, a long queen sack but it has a lot of uh, motives of discovered attack and uh, i mean discovered attack and pieces facing each other and how you can uh, throw in some intermediate moves and come up with a correct thing so i want to show you one uh, one more trap which is uh, again a very interesting one uh, which happened against one guy called i mean uh, between grandmaster from india called uh, ranak Sir? Sir, we can't hear you. Sir, we can't hear you. Whatever you said just now, we couldn't hear. Okay, Sorry. I'm saying that I want uh, you are you're not able to hear me. Okay, what I'm saying is I want to yeah, show you. Another, I want to show you another trap in the in this Sicilian, uh, which happened against an international uh, between uh, Ronak Sadhwani. grandmaster from india and uh, ratnakar and he is an im and that happened in the sicilian accelerated dragon by a series of transposition so that i will show you after the break let's end this and go to the next part and i'll show you there okay see you on the other side